So, Daniel, when do you get to that coveted profitability? Well, we're turning a corner right now. We've let it be known that within a matter of weeks, we will see peak losses. So our losses are going to begin to edge downwards. Already in Q4, we're going to see shrinking losses. Even as our business continues to grow, we reported 77% revenue growth year on year. So we're seeing strong growth and shrinking losses. So we're very much on the path. And this is really a reflection of the business doing what it was designed to do. This is the output of many product launches, many market launches, 12,000 pushes of production software just during the course of the last year alone. And all of these investments are beginning to pay off. It's very gratifying. Now, you said you've moderated spending and the pace of hiring and that you basically have enough gas in the tank, you know, not to need any additional capital and to subsist on, you know, the capital that you have until you get to that point. Um, what's your outlook if the macro environment continues to be very challenged, if we go into a recession? You know, we're fortunate um, to be working in an industry that is pretty resilient when it comes to recessions. So we are seeing green indicators flashing on our screens really across the business. Strong demand, strong unit economics, strong marketing efficiencies, so strong operational efficiencies. There are a couple of areas where we're impacted by the macro. For example, cost of capital has definitely shot up, which is why we'll be spending it much more cautiously. But actually, in terms of the fundamentals of our business, insurance as a space, as an industry, is reasonably resilient. Inflation impacts us somewhat. Cost of capital would impact us if it weren't for the fact that we're already well-funded. But other than that, we're reasonably impervious to what's happening out there, which is a, a fortunate position to be in. Now, since the acquisition of Metro Mile, a third of the business, as I understand it, is renters. 20% of the business is cars. What sort of trends are you seeing uh, in the insurance industry, given rising inflation, given consumers under pressure, you know, when it comes to basic gas and groceries? So inflation does affect our industry, and it affects the car insurance space perhaps more than others, just because the supply chain impact on the car industry has been pretty profound. You take a car into a shop today to get repaired, you'll pay a lot more than you would otherwise. And we're not talking about the 9% inflation. You're talking here about 20 or 30% inflation specifically within that industry. So definitely an impact there. And in an industry where you can't raise prices willy-nilly, everything has to be approved by regulators and 50 regulators at that, you can often get timing mismatches between the time that you apply to change rates and when you can actually change those rates, and inflation does impact you that way. We do have the advantage now, having acquired Metro Mile, though, of being in a unique position of having a far richer, more textured, more precise data set on which to price. So the industry at large uses broad stroke proxies, gender, credit scores, marital status. Metro Mile has really been spending the last 10 years with precision sensors driving billions of miles so that they can price and really estimate the risk of every mile driven for every individual insured. And having inherited all of that data and now ingesting it into the Lemonade tech stack, we should be in a position to have an advantage play even in the car space, even under these relatively duress conditions that the industry is experiencing. Yeah. Now, I understand you're also exploring blockchain technology for climate change related insurance for farmers. You know, What's the status of that and the potential of that? Yeah, it's a fabulous initiative. This is part of the Lemonade Foundation, which is a nonprofit arm. So this is entirely nonprofit. And we've launched the Lemonade Climate Coalition. So this is the Crypto Climate Coalition, where we're using an avalanche-based smart contract to enable subsistence farmers in Africa to insure their crops. Now, you're talking about something like $5 worth of premiums um, over the course of a season, something like $60 of claims. At those levels, traditional insurance just cannot operate. The cost of just selling a policy, of supporting it, of then handling a claim, all of those dwarfs dwarf the kind of uh, fees that I just mentioned. But a smart contract can execute those kind of uh, insurance policies instantaneously and at zero overhead. So we're really shifting the entire policy into a smart contract where a farmer in Africa will be able to use their feature phone to buy coverage instantaneously. That will be translated into a wallet on chain, which will execute against a smart contract. 
which will then be parametrically okay. driven so that if there's a climate event, they'll get paid instantaneously with no overheads. It's part of our non-profit initiative we're very proud of.